Hi there, this is Vince of VincePrep.com talking about how to end your MBA interview on a high note. I do lots of MBA interview training. It's one of the favorite uh, activities. One of the things I love most about my job is helping my clients actually get through the final stage, which is the interview. Often at the end of the interview, the interviewer will say, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? And this is something that can cause stress uh, if you don't know how to end, how to respond to this. There's three basic ways to do this. There's three strategies for what else. This is a what else question that comes up at the end of the interview. Um, the main thing is to end it on a high note, is to emphasize passion, enthusiasm, and fit. Uh, let me be more specific. So the three strategies are basically... Strategy one is to say, no, there's really nothing else, but then make sure you reaffirm your fit with the school. Strategy two is there is something missing, and you've got to identify it and uh, find the missing puzzle piece and put it in the right place. And the third strategy, which I think is the best one, and I'll talk about it last, therefore, save the best for last, is to answer the question with a question. I'll talk about that more in a minute. So strategy one. When the interviewer says, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? You could say something like, nothing else immediately comes to mind. We had the opportunity to discuss my strengths and my areas for development. Still, I'd like to reemphasize how much I've grown as a result of this process and that I feel confident this school will be a great fit for me. So it's just a long way of saying, no, nothing else. But you, you're just at least being polite and reemphasizing you're giving a summary of your interview in a way. So this works really well if you're confident that everything important has been touched upon. Um, you might give a quick summary. I've talked about strengths A and B, as well as weaknesses C and D. But most of all, I think I've really shown that I belong at Stanford, or whatever it is. Um, that's the most important thing. Let me give a quick caveat. If you're interviewing with Rod Garcia, the admissions director at MIT, you don't want to end your interview with by saying that MIT is my number one choice. It could just be Rod, but uh, he doesn't like that answer. And here's what he said in a recent interview. So Rod says, I have been burned by this line in the past, and I find that the people who say it, mo who people who say it are most often not coming here. Even if you're sincere, don't say it. I'm just speaking for MIT, but sometimes I'll be in the middle of an interview that is going really well, and then I hear someone say, MIT is my number one choice. I know what to do with that data. And maybe it's just MIT, the fact that their yield is not as high as Harvard, Stanford, or Wharton. Um, for whatever reason, don't say that to Rod. Other schools, it depends. This is just a caveat. It's not always best. You've, in other words, well, really for any school, it's a cheap line. Um, if you think about an MBA fit as like a relationship, um, it's always better to show and not tell. So if you'd rather show Rod that it's your number one choice, do your homework. Talk to current students. Talk to recent alumni. Figure out what it is that MIT or any school offers you that best prepares you to achieve your goal. In other words, get it down to exclusivity. Only this school has a particular professor, a special program, lots of experiential learning, a, a, a unique aspect of the student culture, but it really has to be unique. Um, and then you've got to tie that back to how that opportunity best prepares you for your goal. Anyway, I'm going on too long about this point, um, but it's important. Show, don't tell is always my advice for essays and interviews as well. Okay, strategy two. If there really is something missing, you've got to identify what that what wasn't asked, and then you've got to quickly come up with a good answer that fits uh, the missing piece. So here's how here's how that might this here's my, what that might sound like. Is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Um, you might say, um, Yeah, I want to talk about why this school is a good fit for me. If I had an inter I had a client recently, her interviewer for Cornell Johnson, it doesn't matter what school, but it happened to be Cornell alumni, never said, why Cornell? Why Johnson? For whatever reason, either he forgot or he didn't, he thought she didn't really want to come, so he didn't bother asking, <laughs> whatever reason, he never said, 
why Cornell? So at the end of the interview, he said, is there anything else you want to talk about? And she said, yeah, I'd like to mention my number one reason why, uh, or, you know, I'd like to mention the main reason why Cornell is a good fit for me or Johnson, whatever it was, however she said it. And then she did show, not tell. She mentioned a particular unique aspect of the program and connected it back to her goal. So it's, it's like the, the metaphor here is, and you go to see a live concert, m music, I'm a musician. So when I was in a band, we play all the songs on our list and on a good night, let's hope the audience is cheering and they want to hear one more song. Well, we as a band, you know, have a quick moment, a conference. What should we play? We didn't play that, that, and that. There's three songs we didn't play. Which one fits this mood or this moment? Do we want to end with a happy song, get them dancing? Do we want to end with a, a quiet moment of reflection? What's needed here? It's like that gut instinct. So really, at, at the end of the day, this is actually all about leadership. Um, leadership, a big part of leadership is decision making. So you've really got to use your judgment. Bad judgment for this topic would be another leadership is a story, another teamwork story, uh, more reasons why you want to go to this school, more contributions. Anything that's already been asked and answered wouldn't be good. It'd be again, it'd be like the band re, you know, playing the song again. Maybe that's a good choice. I think that's cheap. You know, the third song of the night, they replay it at the end. Eh. Um, I don't think it's a good idea, especially because it's long. It, especially, it, look, a good interviewer knows that she has to talk about, she has to confirm that you're a leader. You have leadership potential anyway. She has to confirm that you're good in a team, that you're, the other people will like working with you. If she, if she doesn't, uh, if the if it comes to the interview end of the interview and she and she says anything else you want me to know, and you say oh yes I want to tell you another leadership experience another example of my achievements how great I am. If she wasn't confident that you have enough accomplishments or you're not good in a team, or that you don't have leadership potential or that you don't really want to go to the school, she'll ask. She won't let that go, right? She can't if she's alumni or whoever she is. She has to write a report at the end of the interview, right? If she doesn't have enough data, and on that report certainly are topics of basic things like leadership, potential, teamwork, fit with the school, right? If she doesn't have enough data to fill in those boxes, she'll make sure she does. It's not your chance to... Anyway, you get my point here. Don't repeat stuff that's already been asked about. If there really is nothing else to say, then go to strategy one. No, I think I've shown my strengths, A, B, and C. My weakness is X, Y, and Z. Most of all, my fit with the school. Okay, now, finally, um, the last thing I'm going to talk about is strategy three. I think this is the ultimate strategy. This is the best of all. This is something that uh, there's a Business Week article you can see that I've reposted on my website. This is what I call the Beth Fly strategy. Beth Fly is a is a veteran of the uh, MBA admissions world. She's been at Kellogg. She's now the director at UNC, Ken and Flagler. She's great. She usually comes to our AGAC events, and I really like Beth, and I, I really respect her. She says that you should always end the interview, or you sh when the interviewer says, is there anything else you'd like to talk about? Beth says, and I agree, you should say back to them is to answer the question with a question. In other words, you can say, is there anything else I can further address? So the interviewer says, is there anything else you want to address? And you say, well, is there anything else I, I can address? Is there anything else? Can I, can I help you understand me better? Um, it's good. It shows confidence. It's proactive. And it's not that you're second guessing the interviewer, but you're giving her that last chance to remember, oh, you know what? I was supposed to ask you, or I did want to ask you about if, if it's not a blind interview, if it's an application based interview, there may, why did you get a C in this class, right? Or if it's alumni, um, maybe they'll remember they forgot to ask you uh, something critical. Um, so it's a nice way to put it back on the interviewer uh, to give you one more chance to give them one more chance to figure out. It's also much better than asking about procedural things. What's the next step? When am I going to get my answer? That shows anxiety or never ever ask for an evaluation. How did I do? What do you think my chances are? 
um, you know, that kind of stuff. It makes them uncomfortable. It puts them on the spot. This is a much better strategy. It, it's proactive. It's accommodating. It's friendly. Uh, and it shows confidence. I think this is the best strategy of all is to say, um, is there anything else I can further address? After this, usually there's Q&A. For every school except Harvard, in some, in many cases, Harvard, many Harvard admissions board interviewers don't say, do you have questions for me? But almost everyone else does. Um, Harvard is just a matter of 30 minutes. There's very little time for that. Um, most other interviewers, especially alumni interviewers, welcome questions. Um, I'll make a separate video later about that, um, how to ask good questions. But this one is more about the what else topic. All right. Last thing about this is you really don't know until the real situation how you should end the interview. My suggestion is the default strategy should be answer the question with a question. In other words, say, they say to you, is there anything else you'd like to address? And you say, is there anything else I can address? Is there anything else you'd like me to, to talk about? I think that's the default strategy. That's what you should basically go in with that as a plan. However, you've got to pay attention to the interview and you've got to use your judgment. Um, if, if there was something critical they didn't ask about, so something positive, never bring up a negative topic. A, bl a, a blind interviewer, a resume-only interviewer, a Wharton interviewer, current student, or even admission staff at some schools that only has your uh, resume, any blind interviewer, in other words, any interviewer that only has a resume, doesn't know your GMAT, so don't bring it up. They don't know your GPA, so don't bring it up. Never voluntarily mention a weakness. Um, if, it's, if it's an application-based interview for MIT or Harvard or uh, you know some other schools that have your essays, London interviewers have read your application essays, INSEAD has your application even though they are alumni. For them, you might, need, you might want to address a negative point. But again, I always think that if there's a negative factor that they need to bring up, they'll bring it up. I always say bring up something positive or nothing at all. Anyway, I've gone over. I'm repeating myself. Um, there's more information about this on my website. Uh, head on over to vinceprep.com. Uh, lots of interview resources there. And finally, for YouTube, subscribe to my channel you'll be the first to know when I've uploaded, uh, uploaded a new video. And thanks again for your time and attention. I wish you the very, very best with this application process.